Hey, welcome back everyone. It's been a while. I ain't know. <laughs> uh, I've moved house. There's a lot of stuff going on. I had some personal stuff going on. But here we are in the new house. I do have some content for the old house, but whether I ever get around to publishing that or not, I don't know. Um, that basement got finished and I kind of ran through a little bit of what we installed in there. Nothing crazy, nothing interesting. Um, but here I am in my new house and we've been here for about a year and while I wanted to make videos around this initial rack build, we just moved in and we had to throw stuff together and we had to just, you know, make sure it works. And as you can see, it is a bit of a mess. We have this pre-installed panel on the right there, uh, which the contractors gave us, but obviously I'm not using that. So there's no cables running into it. It's all running down. So let's take a quick walkthrough of some of the issues we've got um, and some of the, the kind of problems I created for myself. Okay, problem number one. As you can see, I created a mess. Um, to be fair, the contractor did an okay job of like looming all the stuff together. There's, and they gave me a, lot, a bunch of extra cable, which I really do appreciate because I'm actually gonna be moving stuff around and I'll get to that in a little bit. But you know, I tried to be organized from the get-go where I kind of like created these looms and I kind of uh, bundled cables of the same room in group and um, outlet together. Um, but I counted, there's over 50, Ethernet cables, and then there's a bunch of coax, and there's a bunch of um, some speaker cables in here as well. So the majority of it's Ethernet cable, like the yellow and some of these white cables, and then the, the mostly white ones are kind of um, speaker cable. Why do I have so many cables? <laughs> it's a really good question. So this is a new build. Um, it got completed literally end of last year. Um, ooh, no, sorry, end of 2021. So why is there so many cables? Well. When I spec the house, and this is something if you're thinking about building your own house, is you want to make sure that you're kind of future-proofing. Um, now, the, the ultimate future-proofing is doing this, um, we call it Smurf tube, or these are orange now. They got called Smurf tubes because they used to be blue, and, you know, blue and Smurfs are blue, and they said the Smurfs could go up and down them. Um, but they could be blue or orange or whatever these days. But ideally, you'd like run one of these conduits to anything that you care about. But um, it kind of gets inconvenient because you have to pull cables all the time. And so we did some of that. There's one going to our main living room TV, which is, and this is a fiber optic uh, HDMI cable going up there. Um, and then there is um, one, this, there's one over here off, off camera, which goes up to the attic in case you want to run stuff to the attic and then run stuff down to the base, uh, into, the, into the upper floor. Because obviously running cables between floors now is a pain once the house is finished. But there is, each TV has about three ethernet cables. Um, Future proofing, so your TV generally requires one ethernet cable. Your, um, then if you have something like an Apple TV or a Chromecast Ultra or Google TV, you generally want that plugged into a cable too. We actually send, some of these TVs we actually send HDMI over ethernet. Um, and Cat6, ideally you want Cat6A or Cat, Cat7 cable, this is all Cat6. Um, but most of those HDMI over ethernet, as long as you're doing a fairly short run, you know, nothing crazy. They work really well. I and mean, we have one running up to our bedroom. Um, and the main issue is because um, we have speakers pre-wired into most of the house and we actually send the TV audio through the pre-wired speakers in the ceiling. Um, so we send the HDMI and the HDMI arc over the ethernet. So that's why every single TV or place we wanted a TV um, will have three ethernet cables. So you can have your, your media driver and then the TV's plugged into it as well. So then the TV's not trying to do Wi-Fi updates or if you want to fall back to the smart TV functions, that's an ethernet cable too. And then you've got one spare or you know, or you can send data down it. We did send coax to all those TV points as well, just in case we sold the house and then someone isn't up to date and they still want to use their uh, Comcast or whatever cable TV and they still send coax everywhere. Uh, you know, I had the conversation with the contractors about that and I was like, well, why would I do coax? And just because the way their pricing works, it was cheaper to do a coax and three ethernet than it was to do four ethernet cables. So I was like, ah, okay. So there's multiple TV points in the house. So that adds up pretty quickly. You can go four or five TVs or locations. And then also we have camera points. So there's multiple cameras throughout the house. There's an ethernet cable to each one of those because the cameras are PoE and data. I don't want cameras over Wi-Fi and Hopefully, if you're watching this, you understand why Wi-Fi is flaky or can be blocked or insecure, all the, all, all the above. And also, cameras send quite a lot of data. So if you want to make sure your Wi-Fi is as fast as possible, take those cameras which are constantly streaming data off of the Wi-Fi and put it onto an Ethernet cable. So they get power and they send data directly to your storage system. So that's already 
20, 30, 40 cables, almost 40 cables at that point. And then on top of that, we also have other stuff like um, the pre-wired speaker sections, but then they also, I also got them to run ethernet to each of those locations for a couple of reasons. If I want to put a smart home device there or a tablet there, I now have an ethernet cable for either data and power, and I have um, some devices, PoE tablets that do smart home controls. So that's one reason. And the other reason is if you, um, if you want to do, if you want to have like a smart speaker controller in the future, basically a future proofing, it's really handy to have an ethernet cable there so you can either do data or PoE. Now, while I have 50 here, um, there's actually more cables as well because um, I have Sonos's here, which require an ethernet cable each. I have, as I said, the HDMI bands, I have HDMI receivers. I have a server down here, which also uh, requires data, my router, and then I have a uh, UNVR, which is the, the Unify network video storage. And they all require cables. And I have got more to go in here. And then on top of that as well, we have IoT stuff. So um, up here, I've got a power view for my, my motorized shades. I also have the Hue. I also have, so the Hue, um, Philips Hue stuff. So as you can see, some of that's a bit of a mess because it's like these cables running around. So what is the plan? Stage two. Well, stage one and a half. Firstly, I'm going to label all this. <laughs> they are labeled. They have like a bit of um, black handwriting on a Sharpie on it, um, but some of them are 100% correct. And then also um, some of it's got rubbed out and it's just much easier to read a label. Let's take a step back and have a bigger picture of what's going on. Right. We now enter the show and tell portion of this video. Um, not less show and tell, more plan and what we're going to be doing. And I say show and tell because I've got some stuff down here. I'm just going to run you through what's going on. That's uh, the solar edge system there. I have this space here allocated for a brand new rack. And as you saw, as I showed earlier, my uh, server down there is actually longer than my existing media rack. This, this rack over here to my left is not actually designed for network gear. It's actually a media rack in the sense like, you know, um, you should you install it in a, a venue and put amps and stuff in it. That's why it's not very deep. And that's the reason why my server sticks out. Why do I need a new rack? Well, that's the main reason, in your rack, because my server's sticking out the bottom of it, and you know, if someone runs, walks past it, or grabs past it, a cable can get knocked out. Not exactly what you want. As I showed earlier, is that that rack is rammed full. Um, I got, so we've got a couple more things down here. We're going through, we've got Sonos's to add. I have, I have two new switches, because as long, as well as the Sonos's, once we add the rest of these cables, and the Sonuses, and then new receivers down the road, and more ethernet cables, because the basement's not finished. I need to add some more on the main floor as well. Um, some for the kitchen, some for my office, and some for the other office. We need, we're gonna put floor boxes in. So that's another 10 plus ethernet cables that need to go in. I need another switch. I actually have my old switch from my old house. Um, I got my old one. This is, a, this is the standard 48, 500 volts, uh, 500 watts. This is gonna become like the IoT switch. So it's gonna be, not high data, not the high important stuff, but things like the Sonos, the receivers, stuff that want to talk to the internet, but they don't need like, you know, they're not uploading tons of data. They're streaming music or maybe video at most. Um, receivers, right, the only reason they talk to the internet is just so they can get an update from time to time or, or if they're on the ethernet, so um, Home Assistant can talk to them and they can change channels and stuff. So that's gonna go on the old switch because it's just standard PoE, it's not the high power output, and it's a standard gigabit for each port. No IoT needs more than 10 meg, let alone um, let alone 100 or a gigabit. So these cables, so some of these cables are gonna stay on here, most of these audio ones that run to speakers and then run to my control panels. And then some of them will stay down here, we'll have to like split them. The rest, however, I'm actually gonna move back over the top over here to this rack here. And I have a rack, um, I have a rack, a new rack on the floor here, which I'm gonna build, which is a full size server rack. It's open frame, I don't care, it's my basement, who cares? Open frame rack, decent sized depth to fit servers in. And the main reason for that is obviously the length of that current server won't, will fit in it correctly. Myself, uh, my wife, our gaming computers are now going to go down in the basement. And yeah, I'm copying other YouTubers and whatnot, and it's not a new thing. But after seeing a bunch of people doing it, we want we need some more space to put, you know, a minimum two U size servers in there times one or two. And that way we can have our gaming machines down here, and then we're going to run HDMI cables or, or um, fiber. DVI cables up to our offices, which are just one's over there and one's over there. At the side of the house, that way we don't distract each other when working. So new racks going here. The cables are gonna run some cables over and drop them down. I'm gonna install a new outlet at the top here. 
I'm gonna put another 20 amp feed in. Not that I'm ever probably gonna hit that 20 amp limit, but when you combine the low voltage stuff over here for audio, and if you've got all the amps going at the same times, that adds up. You technically, each one of these Sonos amps can draw 250 watts. If you've got a big party going on and they're all on they're all amped up, there's I've got five set amps in total plus two receivers. You're getting towards two kilowatts there already. So you're gonna tap out that and then you have a 500 watt PoE, which is gonna be powering stuff. And then you have and then the server and the other stuff over there with you know a kilowatt power supply. So two 20 amp feeds, one for this rack and then one for this rack. And it's just a peace of mind or a breaker flips. You're not gonna take everything out. You're gonna just take out one or the other. Even though my critical infrastructure does have UPSs on, I have a big one for the server. I have a small one for the network gear. And I'll probably have to get another one potentially for this IoT stuff over here. Not that I mind it if it goes off, it's just inconvenient and it kind of messes stuff up. Uh, what else? That's it pretty much. So we got, you know, we, we got some stuff here. We got some cables are gonna, some hooks are gonna mount to the ceiling to run cables through. We got our new Sonos, Sonos amps that are gonna be uh, labeled for each room. Um, we have, we're gonna run, I got extra sizes here, but we're actually gonna run fiber optic cable between the two racks. Um, no other reason apart from it's that I would use direct attach cables, but they don't go longer. You can't, you can't go longer than a it's either three or five meters with the direct attached cables. So they wouldn't actually be long enough. So I went for fiber and fiber is actually surprisingly cheap now. The expensive part is the modules. Um, so you have your fiber to receive the modules down here. That's the expensive part. But once you've got these, the cable's kind of pretty affordable. Um, what else? We have an aggregation switch. So, and it's like, why do I want an ag aggregation switch? And the way this works, I'll get more into it in the next video. Um, it's just, a, multi, a bunch of 10 gigabit ports. That sends data between multiple switches really quickly. The router routes packets really quickly. <laughs> you try and separate those two things out. Um, and then you combine that with my current switch, which is the, the more modern, newer 48 port switch from them. Um, and the main difference with that has um, higher, some of the ports are 2.5 gig and then some of the ports have Bluetooth, uh, not Bluetooth, uh, PoE++, which is like their 48 watts or 40, 50 watt output on them. That's it for today just the plan. Also, hopefully you can join me in the next video where we're gonna get, get started on some of this stuff. And just so I don't bore you because these videos would be an hour long. And hey, if you like an hour long video, then let me know. I'm happy to do a long cut, but I, I think most people have a pretty short attention span these days. So uh, that's for today and I'll join you and join me in the next one. Thank you, see you soon.